Hello and welcome back to Advanced CSS3 Animations. In this lesson, we're going to do a quick review of CSS3 transitions. Now again, this is not an introductory course on CSS animation, so if you've never used CSS3 for animation, then I would highly advise you to check out our original course on CSS3 animations before moving forward here, because this lesson is going to be a very brief review on how to put together an animated transition in CSS3. In fact, we're only going to cover the shorthand version of the transition property here. So if you want a more in-depth understanding of what's going on, then again, it would certainly behoove you to check out the original CSS3 animation course. Now for this particular lesson, we're going to discuss transitions, which in CSS3 are different from animations. In CSS3 terminology, a transition results from a change in the state of an object. Most commonly, you'll see transitions with hover effects. So when you hover over an item, certain properties of that item, such as its height, its width, its color, rotation, etc., can be animated from an initial value to an ending value. So when you hover over an item, you can make its height grow or its width grow, or you can animate it from one color to another color, etc., etc. An animation, on the other hand, usually occurs as the browser loads, and an animation can be a little more flexible than a transition. For example, with an animation, you can make it loop. You can also add multiple keyframes to an animation, as opposed to a transition where you can only animate it from a beginning value to an ending value. So as we move forward in this lesson, we're going to review how to set up a transition, and later on we'll talk about animations in more detail. So I wanna start by opening up my text editor of choice here, which is TextMate. So I'm gonna create a new file here, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this file. We're gonna save it in our project files folder, and I'm gonna call this file transitionprimer.html. And in TextMate, by giving it that .html syntax, it will, or that .html file extension, it will give us syntax highlighting as we start typing out our HTML. So I'm going to, first of all, enter in the HTML5 doc type, which is open angle bracket, exclamation point, gotta spell that right, doc type, space HTML, and then our close angle bracket, easy enough. Then we'll put our opening and closing HTML tags put our opening head tag and inside the head tag we'll put a title here and I'm just gonna put transition primer, close our title tag. And then I'll close the head tag and put our opening and closing body tags. So in this particular video, I just wanna put a big square in the center of the stage and we're going to animate the rotation of that square whenever we hover over it. And again, the only point of this is to give us a quick review on how to set up an animation like this. So I'm gonna put all of this inside a div and I'm gonna give it a class of animate this. And then I'll just put our closing div tag here. So there's nothing inside that div, it's an empty div. Uh, but we're going to give it some attributes in CSS to make it visible, and then we're gonna rotate it. So let's save this file. Then I'm gonna create a new file. We'll drag this new file over here to the side so that we can see both of them. We might just resize them so that they're side by side. And uh, in this new file, I'm gonna go ahead and save it as, let's go ahead and select all of that, including the file extension. And I'll call this transitionprimer.css. So here, first of all, I wanna give this animate this class here some properties. So we'll type dot animate hyphen this, and we'll give it a height of, let's say 200 pixels. We'll give it a width of 200 pixels, a background color of red, and the hex shortcut for red is pound F00. And then I'm gonna give it a margin of zero auto so that it will be centered within the browser window. And uh, let's start with that. Let's see how that looks. Let's save our CSS file. And then we need to actually link to that CSS file in our HTML. So in the head of our HTML document, just below the title tag, we'll put our link tag, rel equals style sheet. And we'll set our href equal to the name of that CSS file, which is transition hyphen primer dot CSS. Okay, so let's save that. And then I'm gonna drag in a window here, a finder window, which has our project files folder open. 
and I'm going to double click on transitionprimer.html to open that up in my browser. And my default browser here is Chrome. And here's our file. So we have a nice red square. So we want to make sure that that's there and showing up properly before we move forward. So now let's jump back into TextMate and let's animate it. So in order to animate this item, we need to add, again, we're using a transition here, not an animation. And in CSS3, those are two different things. So here we're using a transition. So on the next line, still inside the animate this class, we're going to call on the transition property here. And then there's a few things we're going to put inside this property. And again, we're going to use the shorthand here. We're not going to use all of the separate transition properties. We're going to do it all on one line. So first of all, we're going to put the value that we want to transition, the property that we want to animate. And the property we're going to be dealing with here is called transform. We're going to use the transform property to rotate our item. So we have the property we're going to animate, which is transform space. And then we have the amount of time we want it to take. How long do we want this animation to take? So if we want it to take half a second, we would type 0.5 S. S is for seconds. Space and then the timing function we want to use. If we don't type in anything here, then it will use a default timing function. I want to use the ease timing function, which will ease in and out of the animation, creating a nice smooth animation. And 99% of the time, that's the function I use. So this alone is not going to animate anything because we haven't really specified what we're going to animate this transform property to and when we're going to animate it. When are we going to animate this thing? Well, we want to animate it whenever we hover over it. So we need to create a hover class for this animate this class as well. So dot animate this colon hover and then inside our curly brackets there, we're going to add a transform property here. So the way the transform property works is we type transform colon space and then the actual property that we want to transform. And it has a few different items that we can transform, including scale, rotation, and some 3D properties as well, which we're going to get into soon. For now, we're just going to transform the rotate property. And the way we do that is we type rotate and then inside parentheses, the number of degrees we want to rotate it by and we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So I'm going to type 90 DEG for degrees. Notice there's no space there. It's just 90 DEG. And when we hover over that item, hopefully it will rotate. Now let's see if it works. We're going to save that, jump into Chrome. And when we refresh, unfortunately, we're going to see that it doesn't work. If I hover over that item, it just sits there. And the reason is we're using Chrome, which is a WebKit browser, which doesn't fully support this transform property yet but it does have its own identical version of that transform property called WebKit transform. So we just need to include a few vendor prefixes here to get this working on multiple browsers. So we have the original transition property here. I'm going to copy that, go down to the next line, and I'm going to type hyphen WebKit hyphen, and then paste that. So hyphen WebKit hyphen transition, and then we need to point to the correct transform property, which is not transform, but it's hyphen webkit hyphen transform. So then down here, we need to take this transform property, copy it, go down to the next line and paste it. And then before that property, we'll type hyphen webkit hyphen transform. So then we need to include this for other browsers as well, such as Mozilla browsers. So we could highlight this, copy it, paste it on the next line, and then change webkit to MOZ here and here and then paste it one more time and change webkit to o for opera browsers here and here so then we'll come down here we'll grab this webkit transform property here copy it and then i'll paste it twice on the second one we'll change it to moz and on the third one we'll just change it to o for opera so now let's save that jump back into chrome refresh our page now when we hover over that item it animates for us when we move away, it goes back to the original value. And that's how you set up a transition in CSS3. So again, as we move forward, we're gonna create some more advanced animations using 3D transformations. So we'll get to that in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then.